So in this project, we're going to be creating a simple color flipper with a bit of HTML, CSS, and a little bit of JavaScript. I used to really love building these sort of projects when I was first learning to code because they're quite nice to look at, they're quite impressive, but they're quite simple to achieve as well. But that's only if you really know how to use JavaScript to interact with the web page that the user is working on. So that's exactly what I'm going to show you in this project. I'll show you how you can listen for interaction from the user when they click the button, but also how to work with and change the web page that the user is on. So that's an overview of what we're going to be doing. Let's dive into the project and start coding up our color flipper. So let's make a start on our project and I'm just going to get set up by creating a few files. So let's create a web page for us. Uh, let's create a CSS file and we'll also create a JavaScript file, which will be the key thing that we need to have in there to actually add in our interactivity. So over in our index page in our, our markup, let's create a skeleton web page just here with Visual Studio Code shortcut. And what we can do is just make sure that we've got this open and running in live server as well, uh, so that any changes that we make to any of our projects will be updated live in the browser there. So let's set a title within our document. So I'm just going to call it uh, Color Flipper. So here in the UK, we actually spell color with a U. So I'll be using that throughout the rest of the project just in case it confuses you. And let's actually link the style sheet. So the app.css file and also the JavaScript as well. So that's the app.js file. And I'm also going to put the keyword defer onto the script tag, which will basically wait until the whole markup on the page has loaded before we start trying to run any JavaScript, which is kind of essential for the way that we're going to code this project. So with that in place, let's actually create the markup that we're going to have on our page. So all we're going to have really is a section element that's got a couple of bits of text inside there, and of course the button uh, that will trigger the user interaction. So I'll create a section element here, and I'm going to give this an ID of color display. So this will just help with our CSS selection by giving the section a specific ID. So inside there, we're going to have a heading level one tag. It's the first heading on the page, so it makes sense to go for heading level one. And the text that comes after that, which is going to be the hex code for the actual color that's being displayed, uh, I'm going to wrap that inside of a span tag and give that span a specific ID. And we'll just say that's current color. And the reason for that is so that I can target this span with JavaScript later on, and then just update this text whenever I need to. So that's the kind of heading that we've got inside of our section. As mentioned, the only other thing we really need in there is a button, and I will give this button an ID as well for the same reason, so that we can target it easily with our JavaScript and also our CSS as well. So I'll say new color button, and you can put any text inside here you like, but I'm just gonna say new color. So that's the markup for the project. As you can see, it's appearing here in our live server preview in Chrome. Uh, and obviously the button doesn't do anything at the moment. But before we add that interactivity, what we're going to do is just add a few styles to the app. So over here in the app.css file, what we're going to do is for the section that we've got in there, we're going to target the section. There's only one anyway, but we'll target the, what, the section that has got the color display ID, just in case our app did have multiple sections inside it. And I'm going to set the font family to something different. And I'll use one of the built-in suggestions from VS Code. So we'll go for the, uh, the trebuchet font family there with all the uh, appropriate fallbacks if necessary. And I'm going to add a bit of margin on the top just to push it down. Uh, and also we'll have uh, margin on left and right as auto just to push the section element into the middle. But that will only really work if we've got a width uh, set as 50%. Uh, so it's 50% of the overall page. And we also want to make sure that the background color of this is always white so it stands out against the other backgrounds. So you can use the hex code for white, which is three or six Fs. We can use the keyword of just white there. And the other thing is I'm going to add some box shadow as well, just to lift it off the page. So we'll say 0, 0, 30 pixels, and we'll use a color of black here, um, but we'll have opacity of 0 0.5. So we get a nice kind of faded glow around the actual element. So the text is a bit squished up there, so let's make sure we've got some padding on there, uh, say 50 pixels. And the other thing is as well, let's just have a slightly rounded border. So we'll have a border radius of five pixels. 
The other thing I'm going to do is just target inside of the color display section, the heading level one tag, and just set the font weight of that to be 900, just make it a bit bolder. And the other thing we want to do as well is also inside of the color display section, uh, we just want to target the uh, new color button element. So that's the idea of, that we gave to the button. And we'll do a few things here. We'll set the width to be 100% just so it stretches out across the uh, containing section element. Uh, we'll also set the background color to be black and we'll need to make sure that the color is different from that, the text color. So we'll set the text color to be white and we'll also set the font weight of that to be bolder too. We also just want to make sure there's some padding in there as well just so that it's not pushed up against the uh, edge of the button. And the final thing we'll do is just say that the border uh, is equal to none and we could also make that font size a bit bigger as well, just so it's similar to what we've got in the heading level one tag. So we're now ready to get started with our JavaScript. So let's head on over to our app.js file. And the first thing we'll want to do is just get a reference to a couple of elements on the page. So the first thing we're going to want to get a reference to is the button itself. So let's create a new variable. So we'll say const new color button element is equal to document dot get element by ID. And because we gave our specific button a very specific ID, we can just grab that from our markup and use that to reference it within our JavaScript. So new color button. And that variable now hold a reference to the button on our page. And the other thing we want to get reference to is the current uh, color element which will do the same sort of thing again. So get element by ID. And we're referring here to the span element that has got the hex value inside of there. So we can use that within our JavaScript code to actually assign a new value, a new text value uh, that will display on the page. So we're going to be setting up what we call an event listener on the button. So to do that, we say new color button element dot add event listener. So this is a function that accepts a couple of arguments. And the first one is a string with the type of event we're listening for. So we're listening for click events on the button. And the second argument is a function that you pass in, uh, which is some code that's going to get run when the user actually clicks on that button. So for example, we could just pop up an alert box in the browser. So when the user clicks the new color button, you can see we get this alert box coming up. So that's all working. We've got the right references to the elements in our JavaScript. So with the event listener set up, we need to have a way of coming up with a new hex value, a new background color uh, that we're going to apply to our document. So the easiest way to do this is going to be to create an array of hex values and then just pick out random values until we've got a string of six characters long and then apply that to the body element on our page. So if you're not really sure what a hex value is, normally with numbers, we say it goes from zero all the way up to nine. And then as soon as you hit 10, then you would start again and start with 11, 12, so on. Uh, but hex is slightly different. It's actually a base 16 number system. So when we hit uh, nine, instead of going to 10, we actually hit A, B, C, D, E, and F. So when I'm talking about a random hex value, I'm talking about any value that could be in this set. So let's create a new variable that can hold all of those hex values. And it will be an array starting at zero, going all the way up to F. The order is not important, but it just makes it easier to see what we've got there. And the next thing I'm going to do is actually create a specific function that will pull out a random hex value for us. So let's create a function here and we'll call it get random hex value. So in order to get a random hex value, I'm just going to first of all get a random index position in the array, and then we'll just return the element at that particular index position. So we'll say const random index position is equal to math.random, and then we want to times it by the number of values that are in there. So we could just say uh, multiply that by 16, um, but let's just say, uh, because we know what the length of the array is, we'll say hex values dot length if that did ever change for any other any reason. And we want to wrap the whole thing here in the math dot floor function as well, to make sure that we're getting a whole number and not a decimal that will be returned from math dot random. And then we'll create a new variable inside of the function called random hex value, which is what we want to return. 
and that will just be accessing the hex values array and then finding the item at the random index position. Okay, so with that variable set up, we just want to return that from our function, so random hex value. And now we have a function that we can call that will get us a random item from this array. But we don't actually just want one item from the array, we want six different items from the array. So we could do this process several different times and just get several different random index positions and then return those all as a string. But because we've got a nice function that does one job for us to get the random hex value, we can just call this function six times. So I'm going to create a new function which we'll use within side of our event listener. So we'll say get random hex string. And then we could say what string length do you want to make this function a bit more reusable if we needed it for anything else in the future. And I'll just initialize a new string variable called hex string and we'll return this. But before we do that from our function, uh, let's just have a for loop. So we'll go from i, uh, whilst i is less than the string length parameter that's been provided, we're going to loop and then the hex string, we're just going to append to that the result of a call to the function that we created above, which is get random hex string. So once we've done that, we can return the hex string. So just to summarize what we're doing here, we're creating an empty string and then we're looping the number of times that's been provided in the parameter here to the function. And then each time we're just generating a new random hex value using the function that we created above and then appending that to the string and then ultimately returning the full string uh, from this function. So we're now ready in our actual event listener to do some work here. And we'll just create a new variable inside here called random hex string. And it's going to be a result of calling random hex string, that function that we created above, and we'll call it with a value of six uh, to give us the six characters in the string. And if we just, for example, display that so that you can see what we've got within our code, every time we hit new color, then we should see the new hex string appearing. And it appears to be empty at the moment, so let's just check we may have done something wrong here. And in the get random hex string function, actually, we're calling the same function there again. So we need to say uh, get random hex value there, which is the function above that will just give us the uh, random value from the array. Uh, so if we try that again, uh, clicking the new color button, you can see we're getting a random hex value and it should change each time the user clicks the button on the page. Okay, so that's working as expected, but we don't want to just alert the user to a hex string. We want to do a couple of things. We want to change the background color of the document, and we also want to change this element inside of our section uh, just to display the hex value to the user as well. So let's get rid of this alert from here. We don't want that. We'll also want to make sure that this random hex string has got the hash at the start of it, otherwise it won't be recognized by CSS. So let's just add that to the start of the string that we're creating. So let's change the background color to start off with. So we can do that by simply accessing the document.body element. We could use a query selector or something similar here, but we've got the ability to access the body element of our document in this way. And we're going to change its style property. So this is setting a new CSS or inline style on the body tag. So we'll say set property. And the property that we're going to be setting is the background color, no you. And then we're going to use the random hex string that we've generated from our functions. So we can test that out in the browser now. So every time we hit new color, the background color should change to whatever string has been generated. Uh, but we can't actually see that on the page because we haven't updated this span element in the section as well. And that is luckily quite trivial to change. So if you remember right at the start of our JavaScript code, we created this uh, reference in this variable to a current color element, which is grabbing the current color span from the document. So let's just access that now. So the current color element, and we can set the text content in several different ways. Uh, probably the easiest is to use the text content property. And we're just going to set that as the random hex string value that's stored in that variable. So let's try that again. Let's hit the new color button. And you can see now that the span that contains the hex value, which is initially set as white, uh, is updated as well as the background color itself.
So there's one last little change that we can do to make our colour flipper slightly better and that is to add a fade or a transition between the colours uh, just so that the uh, change between the two different uh, colours when we're generating a new one isn't quite as harsh. And that's just a simple CSS line. So we'll head back over to our app.css file and if we scroll back up to the top of the page, uh, it makes sense to put it up here, but on our body tag what we're going to do is adjust the transition property. It's available for any element with CSS and we're going to make sure that when we transition the background colour property, we're going to set the transition between the two colour changes to be 0.5 seconds. So now when we actually click the new colour button, you can see we get a nice fade between the two colours. And this all goes back to that thing about this being a visually impressive project without much effort. So there are different variations that you could do on this project. You could use RGB or HSL values instead of hex values, for example. And if you do come up with your own examples, then feel free to share them in the comments below. It'd be good to see your different variation on this project. But hopefully that's given you an understanding of how you can get started with JavaScript and setting up events and making changes to the document. If you want to look at something a bit more complicated, then you should check out this next video where we're going to be looking at how to create a countdown time which will involve multiple elements on the page and keeping them updated as a timer counts down which is all handled in JavaScript. That's it for this project, thanks very much for watching, I'll see you next time.